and we have the maximum moment or bending moment right there 32.8 which is picked off right there we need this value to actually calculate the bending stress okay to calculate the bending stress we need to use this formula here the formula saying bending stress in MPA is equal to maximum moment in Newton per millimeter times the Y bar in millimeters and the inertia value right here is going to be in millimeters to the fourth this is the inertia value for the complex shape when we look at uh, the moment we already picked it off from the previous diagram so we have that already these two values we don't have and the formula for calculating the Y bar is right there now if the cross-section of the structural member is a symmetrical cross-section you just need to take the height and divide it by two however if it's a non-symmetrical uh, section we have to use this formula right here for the inertia value this is the inertia for the complex shape in here we have the inertia for the simple shapes and it's summation of inertia of simple shape plus the summation of ADY squared and that will give you the inertia of the complex shape right there okay let's look at the cross section of our structural member we could see that we don't have a symmetrical shape because if I cut it right across here we don't have two equal halves so we don't have a symmetrical shape in the y direction so we have to go and calculate the y bar using this formula right here okay to do that we're going to make a reference to the bottom so all of the centroid of these simple shapes the individual shapes are located right approximately at these location and to get the y bar for or the dy I should say for the y bar it is referenced to the base of the cross section to the base of the cross section so for shape uh, 4 shape 4 right here if I want to get to the neutral axis of shape 4 from the base it's half the height 50 divided by 2 will give you 25 if I want to go to shape 3 I want to locate the centroid of shape 3 from the base it's going to be 600 right there divided by 2 will give get me to the halfway point but then I have to add the base of 50 I have to add the height of shape 4 of 50 it will give me 350 350 for shape number 2 half of the height is 25 plus 600 625 plus 50 will give me 675 right there and for shape number one I'm gonna go all the way to the top the whole height of the cross section and I'm just gonna subtract half of the height of shape one which is 25 and I'm gonna go get uh, 625 so I have all of my dy's right there the areas are fairly simple to calculate when we look at uh, 400 times 50 5 4 is 20 so we'll have 20,000 20,000 fairly easy calculation nice numbers to work with I'm gonna set up the the Y bar information in a table form and I have done that all the areas are listed here I have shape 1 to 4 and I have the Y bar corresponding Y bars right here the only thing I have to do is multiply these to get my ADY okay the ADY when I summate it this value is right up in the numerator and summation of area is the denominator and that'll give me my value for my Y bar again it's demonstrated right here you just drop the three zero drop two more zero you have 425 as your Y bar now remember that this Y bar is from the base of the cross section it is from the base of the cross section so let's take a look at that I place the centroid in because we're going to need that and we have 425 from the base to the neutral axis this is the centroid of the complex shape to get from the neutral axis to the top edge of the cross section I'm going to take the whole height and minus 425 now the whole height will be 600 750 minus 
425 will give you 325. Okay, again, 6, 750 minus 425 will give you 325. So I have the distance from the neutral axis to the two outer edge. I need those uh, Y bars for my calculation of my stress. Also need the dy. Now remember I mentioned that the dy's are not the same. The dy for the y bar calculation was based on the base or it, it is uh, from the bottom of the shape. The dy's for in, in inertia calculation it is from the neutral axis as your baseline. The neutral axis is your baseline. So I need that little distance in there. I need the distance from the neutral axis to there. So the neutral axis is really my base point, baseline and reference point uh, all in one. To calculate this particular little area here, I have the height of 425 from the base. If I have the, from the base to this point here, I could certainly calculate this little distance in here. How do I get this height, I calculated it before, but let's do it again. We have 600 for this uh, center member. Divided by 2, you will get from here to that point. Add the 50. So we'll have 350. 350 from 4, 25 will give you 75. Okay, let's go and do another one. We're going to go and get the Y bar, the Y bar from this centroid to the neutral axis. The only thing I have to do is take 425 minus one half the height here, which is 25, you get 400. Okay, And likewise with the upper half, the upper half, let's go to the centroid of shape one. We have 325 to the top end minus 25, which is half the height, so I get 300. And we have 325 to the top end, minus 50, minus 25, minus 75 from that, you get 250. Okay, so we have all the Y bars that we need to do our calculation of our inertia value. I've placed it in table form again, the base and the height of each one of the shapes. Okay, shape 4, shape 3, shape 2, shape 1. Okay, when we look at the DYs, here they are corresponding dy's and let's look at the inertia value because that comes into play right here we need that number really we need the summation of inertia which is right there for rectangular shape the inertia is bh cubed divided by 12 for simple shapes so simple shape when we want uh, complex shape we have to use this big formula but nevertheless we have all rectangular shapes and we have base times height cubed divided by 12. I've defined the base and height of each one of the shapes right here. So I'm going to take the base times 50 cubed divided by 12. It'll give me 4,166,667. Okay, and that is what I do all the way down. I'm going to summate that and that value will come right here in this formula. Okay, I'm going to take my dy for shape 1 and I'm going to square it because that's what the formula is. A dy squared. You can see the dy is squared right there. Square this, multiply it by the area. In this case, 5 for is 20,000. Multiply 300 squared by 20,000. You're going to get 1,800,000,000 as your answer. Okay, and another one. I'm going to take 250 and square it. And I'm going to multiply it by 25 thousand and it should give me one billion five hundred and sixty two million five hundred thousand and likewise all the way down when I summate that I'm going to have summation of ADY squared as seven billion five hundred and thirty one million two hundred and fifty thousand and that value will come right in here okay that value comes right in there this one is there when I add up the two value, algebraically add them, I will have 8,445,833,333 millimeters to the fourth. Millimeters to the fourth. Now I have all the variables that I need 
all the quantities that I need to apply them to my stress formula. Stress in MPA is equal to moment Newton per millimeter times my Y bar and I'm going to have two Y bars because I have two distances from uh, to the outer edge from my neutral axis and I have my inertia value of the complex sheet. The Y bar above the uh, neutral axis is 325 the Y bar below it is 425 and we've picked off from our bending moment diagram 32.8 kilonewton meter which we need to apply right in there but the units are are not right the units are not right we have to change this uh, kilonewton meter to newton millimeter and to change kilonewton to newton I'm gonna multiply by a thousand meters to millimeters I'm gonna multiply by another thousand when I multiply a thousand by a thousand I get a million so when I take 32.8 kilonewton meter multiply it by 10 to the 6 which is a million I'm gonna have newton per millimeter then I'm gonna multiply that by millimeters I'm gonna have newton per millimeter squared in the numerator and millimeter to the fourth in the denominator the millimeter squared will count uh, cancel out with the millimeter to the fourth and the denominator will be millimeter squared so I'm ending up with newton divided by millimeter squared which is MPA which is MPA okay when I crunch the numbers on this I have 1.26 MPA for the upper part above my neutral axis as my stress okay the outer edge will have 1.26 MPA stress for the lower half I have to run the formula again the only thing that changes from this formula to this one is that my Y bar has changed okay that's the only thing has changed when I crunch the numbers again not a significant increase but it is an increase and it has to be calculated we have 1.65 MPA now we are ready to actually go and construct our stress diagram when we look at our cross section it's right there it's not part of the stress diagram I'm gonna put in the neutral axis and that is not part of the stress diagram either but it certainly demonstrate how to draw the stress diagram this is actually the stress diagram here we have cut the beam right there and the forces will bleed out forces will bleed out we know that right along the neutral axis the forces change from tension to compression we know that we know that from our calculation the upper half has 1.26 MPA of stress and the lower 1.65 MPA when we create our stress diagram you notice the larger the smaller number has a shorter distance from the cut edge and the larger one has a larger distance from the cut edge it doesn't have to be to scale but you should have shorter longer like this the other thing that we have to realize is that the stress from the outer edge decreases to the neutral axis to zero okay the neutral axis is where you change over from tension to compression so it comes to zero there and then it goes back out it starts to increase in a linear form in a linear form the other thing that we have to determine is how to place our arrowheads for stress let's go to our deflected shape when we look at our deflected shape here we did this in video one we see that our deflected shape was like this compression is on top tension is on the bottom <clears throat> the arrowhead always act towards compression and because we cut the beam and we are demonstrating the bleeding out of the forces on the right hand side we have the right shape here so we could put that this is not part of it but it helps us in placing our arrowheads for our stress when we have arrowheads um, or forces acting towards a member that is compression it's indicated by the C and when we have them acting away from the member that is tension which it indicates by the T this uh, basically is the, the stress diagram 